In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can carry out a kernel density analysis, which essentially creates a what's known as a heat map or a hotspot map based on point-based data. Okay, it'll make more sense once we get into some examples. So I'm just going to create a new uh, blank template here, and I'll give it a particular project name and make sure it saves to where I want it to save. So now that we're up and running, what you'll typically start with is some point-based data. And I've got uh, some already loaded into my own folder. I need to add that folder connection. And we've got, it's in this project three heat map data. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Colorado Public Schools. So I'm going to just drag that shape file of points. Now this is a shape file, but instead of polygons, you see our points. Uh, it just happens to be the format that those points are in. And you can see that these are Colorado Public Schools uh, for the state of Colorado. And if I open up the attribute table, you'll see that it, each school has a certain uh, number of attributes associated with it. Uh, total student population, broken down by race and ethnicity, um, the number of the total students that are on free or who are eligible for free lunch or reduced uh, price lunch, and the total number of those two. So total or for re free reduced lunch student body. So one could use you know, attributes like this to weight particular schools by a um, particular characteristic. Okay. So when you have point-based data, you may very well want to show point-based data, but there are times when the point-based data can be a little overwhelming, um, or alternatively, you might your point-based data might actually be um, based on confidential data, it might be patient data. So each point might be the address of a patient in your records. And obviously you can't be displaying maps with people's actual addresses on it. Um, and yet you might wanna carry out an analysis that shows where patients of particular characteristics um, are disproportionately concentrated. So if you wanna to start to work upstream to try to look into environmental conditions and things like that, uh, you'll wanna find a way to display that data in a confidential manner, okay? So uh, I'll just show you what this uh, looks like. So once you have your point data Based data, what you want to do is make sure that it is restricted to just those points that you want to use in the analysis. In this case, I want to um, only use uh, points that fall in the Denver urban area. So what I'm going to do is bring in the urban boundary here and use the urban boundary as a cookie cutter. So I'm going to go back to my map here and select that particular urban area. And then I'm gonna use that to select by location. I'm gonna select not urban, but the schools that intersect is fine with, and then my selecting feature is my selected urban 10. And we'll go ahead and hit okay. Okay, so now it's only selected those schools that are in that cookie cutter. So now I'm gonna pull those particular schools out of the larger data set of schools in Colorado. I am going to export that data. Those are features. And I'm just going to save it to, make sure it saves to um, where I want it to. I'm just gonna go through this once so that you can see where it's going. And the heat map folder. And here you do wanna make sure that it saves to the GDB, the geodatabase. And then the output name, I'll just say Den Schools. Okay, hit OK. So essentially, I'm, I'm trying to create a smaller data set consisting of just the cases, just the schools in the Denver urban area. And then I'll get rid of Colorado Public Schools. And I'll get rid of Urban 10. I just needed to use it to get these. Okay. So instead of having a map of dots, and what I could do if I wanted to, I could right click and go to Symbology. And if I wanted to size these dots by um, an attribute, I could do graduated symbols and set the score to total free or reduced lunch. 
you can see that they're sized. You can see there's very low numbers of students on free or reduced lunch, and then you see pockets where they're higher. And you can change the minimum and maximum size and the color and stuff like that. But even that might not be what you're really looking for. And again, what if you're working with confidential data? You don't want to actually display this. So um, put these back to just single symbol. So the alternative is to create a kernel density map. And what I'll do is I'll go to analysis up here at the top. And if I scroll down through this box, I can typically find kernel density, and there it is. If you don't find it, you can also click on tools and type in kernel. Now, I'm not going to go into the mathematics of how kernel density operates. Suffice it to say, what it's going to do is it's going to try to find higher or lower density areas based on the presence or absence of points and their proximity to other points. So it's going to look at each point, and it's going to search out a certain radius to see are there other points near me. And then if you're weighting those points by a particular attribute, you know, how heavy are they by that attribute or not? Okay. So it's based on a number of, of different factors, right? Um, one can certainly read up on the mathematics of the kernel density function, but uh, we're just going to make the maps for this project. Um, the input point in this case is my Denver schools. I only have the one data set up. Now the population field is, do you want to weight each point by some attribute? In this case, I'm going to weight them by the total number of students on free or reduced lunch. Okay, that gives me a sense of the number of students that are at or below the, the poverty line. Now the output, output raster is gonna, you can give this a name. It's gonna, you can, if I hold the cursor, you can see that's saving to my heat map geodatabase uh, project, and that's fine. And you can change the name if you want. And now you have to set the search radius. And this is notoriously difficult because it's based on the projection uh, coordinates of this particular data, and it's not always clear what this is. So you have to kind of engage in a high-low game here, if you will. Um, and so you might start with one and see what that looks like. So we actually, let's put in one and let's run it and see what the data looks like. And you can see that helped us none whatsoever. So uh, clearly my search radius is it was each dot was looking out too far. So one doesn't work. Instead of you know removing this, let's just go back over here to the geoprocessing. And instead of one, let's put in 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And rerun it. Again, not really working for us. Way too big. So let's go much further down and go 0. 0, 0.05. Now we're getting closer. You can see that we're starting to narrow in on some hot spots. Maybe it's still a little too broad in its scope, maybe not as refined as we want to be, so, but we're also getting closer to zero. So I'm going to switch it to 0 0.03 and rerun it and see if that gives us the kind of degree of specificity, right? It kind of focuses in on particular areas while um, not being too specific. So that's looking a little bit better, right? Um, more identifiable errors. What if we went down to 0 0.01 and see if that gets too specific for our purposes? And you can see there, if I take the, it, you know, in some ways that's almost too specific. They might as well be just looking at the dots themselves. So this is where I'm probably going to go back to that 0 0.03 in this particular case. Again, you're going to find that this varies dramatically with the kind of data you use um, and run 0 0.03 again. Now, once you've got that up and you're satisfied, you can actually even remove the schools. Don't need those anymore. And the, now you can go about cleaning up this and make it look better. Now, if I zoom in, you're going to see that it's kind of pixely. The reason it's pixely is that this projection is based on a raster map or a raster data, which is based on a grid of cells um, rather than just sort of polygons like we've been dealing with with counties and census tracts. So we can do a number of things to kind of make this look better. Um, once you're clicked on your kernel density over here, you can either right click and go to symbology or you can just go straight to your symbology tab if it's already up. One thing I would recommend is maybe instead of 10 classes, let's just go down to seven. Um, the color scheme, you'll notice that it actually is very light at the um, lowest one and it's, and it's purple. Maybe you want to stick with that. But the other thing you can do 
is you could show all of the color schemes. And if I scroll through here, there's some other ones that are even called heat maps. So let's say I do this one up here. Again, it leaves this bottom one basically empty. What if I didn't do one of those that has these little gridded uh, left sides? What you're going to notice is that I get a blue box. Well, to get rid of that, I would just right click on that particular box and hit no color. And then I could start to play around. Um, but I'm going to go back to this one. Okay, so I've got a color scheme that I, let's say I'm, I'm happy with. Then what I can do is I can go up to appearance up here under raster layer, and you might want to make it a little transparent. So to zero transparent, what if I set this to about 45%, which you can see is now I can see through it to some of the information provided by the world topographic map underneath in terms of roads, maybe names of metro areas, things like that. The other thing I can do is get rid of this pixelated appearance. And that's where, again, under appearance, I'm going to go to resampling type and click on cubic. And what this will do is interpolate the values and kind of smooth things out. Um, so I click on that and you can see you get a nicer appearance to the map. Okay. One final thing you can do uh, is format the legend, if you will. Now, the legend values mean almost nothing. They're, they're, vir they're virtually uninterpretable. But you can still uh, go about you know, renaming the um, name of this particular layer to a, two slow clicks and call this you know, um, density of whatever. Okay? The other thing you can do is get rid of these numbers because again, they're, they're virtually uninterpretable. What I would do, again, clicked on this one, I'll go back over to symbology. And here under label, I could just actually replace these numbers and I'll just put this as low. Again, go back to symbology, go to this one at the bottom, the yellow one delete all of that stuff and put high. And then for the ones in the middle, I would actually just remove. Again, this is why sometimes it's nicer to go with seven uh, classes rather than the 10 or, or so, because it's you don't have as much to, to clean up. But you can see that it's cleaning it up over here. And what you'd be left with is the color ramp that simply shows that you know, the light or no color is low density, and then the yellow um, is high density on that particular variable. Okay, so that's how you can uh, do kernel density. I'll show you another one um, in the same project. I'm not going to create a new project, but what I can do is go to map, or sorry, go to insert and do a new map. So I can still have my um, Colorado Springs or Denver public schools up. But I can also create a new map layer and bring in other data that's completely different. So uh, for this one, I might actually just completely remove that stuff. I'm going to bring in some data from the um, John Snow cholera data, which you can read about. Um, I have a link in the directive. And here I have cholera deaths. I have an uh, like a picture of a map of that part of London, Soho, London, and then water pumps, which as you read, played a part. And it asks if I want, you know, given the nature of this data, do I want to calculate statistics? I'll just say, no, I don't need that. And you'll see why I turned off the topographic and hillside because I don't want them competing or they might, it's on a completely different system. So. Here I'm left with this picture of the Soho neighborhood of London back in the day. And uh, what you see are pumps and deaths. So to make these a little more um, distinguishable, I'm going to do the symbology for the pumps and click on this dot. And let's make them squares. And the properties for those squares, let's increase the size and hit apply. And then you can see the deaths. But again, what if this was confidential patient data? Um, and these are sites of death. What if I wanted to kind of open up the attribute table? You can see that each 
is essentially an address, but it also shows the number of people who died at that address. So I have a count of deaths. So if this was confidential data and I wanted to illustrate this using kernel density, I can just go to kernel density. I now have cholera deaths here that I can use. The population field would be the count of deaths. The output raster is you know, set to cholera in this case. And here's the search radius. It's going to be tough. Let's start with one and just see what happens. And it doesn't look like it even shows up. In fact, if I uncheck the, I don't even see it. So that's telling me that maybe that search radius for this particular data, which is very different than the other data, is totally different. What if I just, I'm going to jump up to 300, right, um, and rerun it. Okay, so clearly that was too far of a jump. So let's just go back down to maybe 100. Again, this is a game of high-low, and it's kind of nice that you don't have to change the name and create separate raster outputs. You can just rerun them, and it'll overwrite the uh, previous version as you play this sort of game of high-low search radius. Okay. Not quite there yet, right? but getting there. So let's go down to 50 and rerun. And now we have something that's starting to narrow in on kind of the specificity that we're looking for. Right? It's showing us some higher density areas, lower density areas. It's not just one big um, blotch on the on the map. And again, if I would to get rid of the deaths now, we can see that the higher densities all seem to be clustered around this particular water pump. And at this point, again, you can go and start to uh, you know, do, do transparency, you can go to the symbology and give it a different color scheme, different classes, you can, you know, do the cubic resampling type to make it kind of cleaner and not so pixely. Um, so that's how you can uh, carry out kernel density on data that's very different and where the search radius is quite different and requires a, a, very, a, a different magnitude another data and you have to kind of play around with that in order to um, sort of narrow in on the kind of heat map that you think is most helpful with respect to depicting the density of cases but also potentially weighted cases as this showed.